Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to be unboxing this JG067 from Chingong. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like and subscribe because you're going to be really helping me out, especially the like button because that helps me get seen by the algorithms. And if you do want to join uh, the uh, membership of the channel, it's just 99 pence to join buttons down there. Doesn't seem to work on Apple devices though for some reason, um, but I would massively appreciate it. It's just 99p a month. Quick disclaimer, this is classed as a toy and anything in this video does not apply to real stuff uh, in general. So it is just a toy uh, purely for entertainment purposes only. So this is the uh, so we've got here the JG067, uh, the SD variant, uh, which has uh, paid about £60, uh, just over £60 from Taiwan Gun. These are available in the UK from Patrol Base for about £105. They weren't out of stock at the time of um, doing this video, though. Uh, it comes with a high cap, uh, ABS body, and we'll do the usual rate of fire and uh, range check as well as part of the video. So let's get into this then. Um, so we've got... Obviously quite a nice looking box. We've got a nice little operator sort of picture on the front there. A little bit about being electric power, branding, firing mode, the particular version, whether it's a BB or gel ball, and a little bit of safety information. And that's about it. It's just white polystyrene underneath. So I'll get that lid up and out of the way. Now in terms of this safety information, uh, the chrono in sheet, we've got sort of 353, uh, 356 there. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is the correct sheet from the box uh, because they were all muddled up when the big parcel come through customs, which I will put the link to the unboxing of uh, this if I can still, I can't even remember anymore. Um, I'll sort something out down below. I've got a manual and some targets in there. It's actually quite close to the actual correct version as well, which is nice. We've got our 8.4 volt, uh, 1100 milliamp NIM type battery. A EU style charger, which is no good to me in the UK, unfortunately, but I'm sure it's absolutely fine. And we've got a 240 round high cap. Now, what I will say is a few people have asked this question about the charger and the battery. Now, I would assume the battery is more or less empty. And based on this output, it's got an output of 250 milliamps. So if you di divide 1,100 by 250, it will give you the number of hours and parts of hours. So you're looking at from empty, if it was fully empty, you're looking at 250 into 1,000 is four. So you're looking at just over four hours to fully charge using this little charger from empty. Um, that's just a, a rough guide. That's not an exact science with this particular charger. So, you know, please sort of think about that like that. So think about that if you are going to buy this, that that does need uh, obviously a few hours, but better chargers uh, are available and probably should be bought because it'll look after it better. You've also got the cleaning rod underneath. Now let's get this out and get rid of this polystyrene. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I do like an MP5, particularly the SD version. The only thing that lets me down with them, I just think the mags are just a little bit... A little bit too skinny for me and i prefer a, a chunky mag like a g3 mag is nice and big and chunky uh, but that's my personal preferences aside so you're looking at probably about two kilograms of weight maybe a little bit over so you know there's a nice little bit of heft to it certainly not as heavy as the um sema mp5k that i've got for a dsg building coming up in the future um, but light enough that even sort of fez, fez jr who does play could probably quite happily wield that all day without any real trouble or problems so we've got our mock suppressor at the front which is just a quarter twist clockwise to come off now it's not filled with any foam that cap doesn't seem to want to unscrew either i dare say i might be able to open it i don't want to risk it because um you know after i unbox and disassemble these i do sell them on so i don't want to risk breaking this and, and somebody not having a suppressor uh, but there is a, a substantial amount of weight to that i don't think it'll do an awful lot particularly because it's not um foam filled but they do seem to be i don't know if you can see that down there they do seem to be sort of like venting down there possibly it is foam filled and those to allow the uh the sound out into the foam inside um 
who knows interesting if anybody has um, taken one of those down off the front of a jg 067 i would like to see what was actually inside yours so then got the handguard which has got a nice rubberized feel ribbed uh for anybody's pleasure and uh, we've also got the charging handle here now this is similar to others i can sort of see there is possibly a little bit of wear there already now although it is nice to do the hk slap do that too often and you are probably going to ping that handle clean off uh, and be left with no charging handle now on this particular model that doesn't do anything other than purely a cosmetic to match the the real version so it doesn't matter you're not needing it to access a hop unit because there is your hop adjuster the traditional marui style hop adjuster just a little arm that you just basically push backwards to apply hop to your desired amount and we'll look at how much that adjusts in a little bit so the battery compartment then is inside this hangout so just to make it easier i'm just going to pull that back and i'm going to pull this out so this is like a little pull pin there we go so that's on one side that is just plastic i've seen them be metal uh, i think they were metal on the sema 041 high speed that we had before or blue edition wasn't it i think and then we've got another one on the other side again plastic be careful because they are easy to lose uh, and possibly easy to break and uh, this now takes a good firm pull to slide off what I will say is, if you're putting this back on, if you look inside of here, now there is a ridge at one end. You can see this sort of line coming around here. Uh, and there is sort of like a, it's a little bit deeper here. There's less material here than there is at the front. And that's to match, move that out of the way, this ring here. So that sort of depression at the back needs to go on first. And that is the correct orientation. When it does go on, it will be quite firm. Ooh, nearly, nearly fares. There we go, it went on quite nicely then, but it might be a little bit of a, a pressure to, to reapply it. So it is wired to a mini Tamir in here. It does look like they've put some sort of heat shrink on there. It's a bit different, okay. Well, we will have a look at this internally and it's a bit of a faff to take it apart um, to see what's going off in there. And we have got these sort of rubber rings here that hold in the, um, the little handguard pins, I'll pull that out. So I've got little handguard pins. Oh, actually, do you know what? I'm wrong. I thought they were plastic. I've just, just done the bite test. They are actually metal. Apologise. They're actually metal. Bad mouth and it wasn't uh, deserved. So I'll slide that back on for now. And we'll do the batteries shortly. Uh, I am slightly disappointed. Like, just be careful when you're putting that on. I don't know if you noticed them, but it did completely just knock my hop adjuster there all the way to fully on. So be careful if you're changing battery that that might might catch your hop arm and completely knock your hop off would have been nice for them to just have a, a little bit of an extension here with a 14 mil thread on it just for if people wanted to change uh, their silence or whatever then they could have done quite happily it's not essential i suppose because you have got the integral part of it you know the, the suppressor is part of this setup um but it's just something to be aware of that it would have been nice it's not a deal breaker by any means but obviously it would have been a nice thought. So then got our plastic receiver, all plastic. You've got a metal base plate. Now I like this, a nice big thick um, flathead screw to adjust the motor. You know, a lot of the SEMA sort of, uh, SEMA uh, CM500 series, uh, like the 03, the 06, 13, they've got the tiny little Allen keys of old, which means there's a, a little motor plate inside and things like that, which are fiddly. These ones for me are much, much better. They're much easier to adjust. You know, many more people have got a flat head than an Allen key. So that's, or a hex head key. Um, so that for me is, is a good improvement. Your selector, quite firm going, ooh, it's quite crunchy. So let's listen to that. So in that's from full auto. That's a little bit crunchy going into single. I assume that I'll sort of bed in and it's time as things sort of rub against each other a little bit better. It's already getting easier. Um, Safe, single, full auto. It's not too bad. Um, and it is ambidextrous as well. It can be changed from either side. You've got the traditional MP5 sights then. So you've got the big circle sight at the front and you've got the rotating drum at the back with adjustable sort of um, positioning as well where you can uh, 
undo the screw a little bit and you can move the sight left and, and right. Uh, and these dials are to suit different distances or lighting conditions as well, or so I'm led to believe. You've then got the traditional sling loop there as part of the back part. Now this is, bite test again, this is plastic this part, so obviously just be careful, this might not sort of be the strongest of, of plastics. Uh, but then you've got your retractable stock that is uh, on metal runners. So that's fully extended. That's one position, two positions, three positions, and all the way in is the fourth position. So let's just check that again. One, two, three, four, four positions. That's pretty nice actually that they've put those in there. I do quite like that. Well, technically it's this fifth position. So one, I can see the notches there, two, three, four, and then all the all the way in. That's nice. I'd like to see them do this on the G3s because I find that the collapsing stocks on the G3s are either too far in or too far out. Uh, but that having a little bit of adjustment, you know, that for me is absolutely perfect on that sort of that first um, extension there. So I'm quite happy with that. I, I do quite like an MP5. Just a little bit of a shame about the mags. I just feel, I know the nine mil, I get that. And obviously the model on the real thing, but I just feel like a 45 cal mag, like a UMP mag is a little bit nicer. The SEMA um, mags that they're released with the, the sort of bullet window, they look a little bit nicer and a little bit better to me, I suppose a little bit chunkier. And I'm hoping to get some of those mags and one of the 04 uh, ones as well at some point. Uh, one of the newest style ones with the m lock front end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and do the range check and the rate of fire check and we'll come back and see where that leaves us and uh, we'll look at the batteries and we'll do the gloved operation as well. Okay, so we've got Max 364, min 352. 12.2. 13.5. Ooh, that's nice. Safely to say it's 20, 20 and a half rounds a second. Okay, so um, the Eagle Eye amongst you will have sort of clocked that there's no range check. There isn't because the video is of old where you just can't see where they're going at all. So I just thought it was probably not worth me doing it at all because you can't see them. There's no, there's no need for it really, I suppose. Um, so to confirm then, the range was, um, well, it was a little bit sloppy at first. Um, I ended up having to clean the barrel because they were a little bit all over the place. After I'd cleaned the barrel, um, we were getting about 40 meters, just over 40 meters. I, I, I probably put my money on about 40, just over 40 meters, probably 42 meters. And, and that's probably like max range. I dare say a better hot rubber and you could probably get a little bit further out of that, a better barrel and hot rubber and you'd probably get much, much further, you know, touching into the 50s quite easily um, a, a, as an effective range sort of thing. Um, so it did need a good clean of the barrel. So please be aware, you know, I suppose with anything that from China, it's always worth cleaning the barrel when you get them out of the box. So in terms of rate of fire then, I did charge up the... Um, the 8.4, so on a 7.4 volt LiPo, then we got about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 rounds a second, 12 and a half, just under 12 and a half rounds a second, which is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that, actually, on a 7.4. On an 8.4, then uh, we got uh, about 13 rounds a second. So on a 9.6, then, <clears throat> excuse me, we're getting about uh, 16 rounds a second. A nice little step up there from the sort of 7.4 and the 8.4. And then an 11.1, once again, we know it's going to be the top dog. Uh, we're in 
at uh, around 20 rounds per second, which actually, out of the box, is pretty good. Uh, 20 rounds per second is one of the better rate of fires we've seen, particularly on a, a Chinese-based um, AEG, out of the box sort of thing. Um, so the FPS then, we got a uh, minimum of 352, which is pretty damn close to what they got on their sheet. So I'm guessing this must be the right one. And we got a maximum of 364, so that's like a 12 Point 0.3 uh, FPS difference. Now, what I would expect is that I'll probably settle down to maybe around five FPS difference uh, from your top and your bottom. So obviously at the minute, this still means that this is um, not site safe for the UK. Now, setting your hop, dumping a couple of mags through it might settle the spring down a little bit, might settle things down as they sort of bed in properly. And the hop set for two fives um, will probably bring it still closer it depends where it's the spring's going to settle if it's going to settle towards the higher end then you're going to need a downgrade if it was me personally if i was going to keep this then i would definitely definitely do a bit of a downgrade on it uh, and just make sure that it is definitely uh, below just because we've seen inconsistencies on um chronos i couldn't think of the word then on chronos where you know there can be um, five to ten and rare occasions um fps difference between the two now you know, I am pretty pretty pleased with this so far. The rate of fire is pretty good. Um, you know, the FPS could do have been a little bit lower, but that's absolutely fine. You know, I could have requested this and more or less left it more or less as, as it was going to be out of the box. And I am interested to see what it looks like inside as well. And the price is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the batteries and we'll grab my gloves and we will do the sort of uh, battery fitting sizes and we'll do um, the gloved operation as well. So let's go for the gloved operation. Again, thank you to the guys on my Discord for uh, recommending this to me. I do quite like doing this feature. And uh, if you haven't joined my Discord, please do come and do so. I've got a really good community going on there. Uh, really helpful folks, really knowledgeable folks as well. And uh, I would appreciate you coming and joining me. It's completely free. So gloved operation then. Let's have a look at this bad boy. So selector, dead easy. I can operate that. The uh, stock. Definitely got that in and out with no issues whatsoever. Um, quite happy with that. I'll put that all the way back in. There we go. Uh, in terms of the hop, a little bit fiddly, but I can definitely adjust the hop with these gloves on. The battery compartment. Now, I can definitely take the suppressor off. That's not an issue at all. Take the tag out. Uh, but, and I can take that cover off. Now, I don't think for a single second that I would be able to... I can't even get the hang out now. Come on, fares. There we go. I don't think for a single second that I am going to get those pins out. So I'm going to put one back in. Oh, oh, no. Oh, if anything, that was actually slightly easier than not having gloves on. Oh, not to the camera as well. Put that one in. If I can get under that edge, which I am, I've got it most of the way out already. A little bit fiddly. Would you do a battery change with gloves on mid-game? I don't think you would. You'd probably go somewhere quiet, drop your gloves off and do it anyway. But I could do that and I could get that off as well. And I could get that, that battery in there. HK slap you can definitely do with your gloves on uh, as well. So I'm quite happy that that is probably by design as you know default from the manufacturers that that is designed well in most cases for the real one to be glove operated with gloves obviously they're not going to mess with batteries and things like that on the real one but easy fairly easy going i could actually do that with gloves on so get rid of those and then we'll do the batteries so i've got a pretty i'll show you a pretty epic battery box that's not even all of them as well i've got a couple still uh, knocking about uh, in another room um, so we'll have a look at some batteries. So we'll start with the ones that I uh, do the rate of fire test with. So we'll start with the 7.4. That is going to definitely fit all day, every day, without any issues. So I'll just feed the wiring in there. Have this in earlier for that testing. You know, whether you sort of put it in one way or the other, you'll get those in. And the wiring, in fact, will lay it that way. It's easier if we go that way. Maybe in that way. 
you just have to make sure that all the wiring is sort of under this arc as, as it works out of the way and uh, get that in there i can connect that up i've quite easily got that 7.4 i'll show you which one that is so that is the traditional typical 7.4 2200 milliamp apologize if any of that was on the camera um <clears throat> 2200 milliamp new prol 7.4 next we'll go for the 11.1 that i used to chrono now i don't think this is going to go in here at all i can't even get you i don't bend the wiring too much so the wiring is not even going in there i could probably uh, to push i could get two of the cells in there two of the sticks in there but i'm not going to get the whole thing in there so in terms of an 11.1 you're going to need a slimmer one of those so it just so happens, just to confirm, I'll show you which one that one was. That is the 2600 milliamp three cell 11.120C, um, new problem. I have got, oh, a smaller 2600 11.1 uh, VP racing battery. Now this, I'm not sure it's saying I can get this in either, but this will be easier to fit. Yeah, I'm just not going to get that in there at all. You've just got too much. Two of them, absolutely definitely, I get them in there. The third one, not without mashing something. So that's not going to fit either. I've got a brand new 3000 milliamp Nupro 7.4 volt LiPo. Now that's obviously one hell of a beast of a battery. Not even going to go in at all. Not even entertain that one. Now getting down to the realistic stuff. So the 8.4 that it came with will sit in there quite nicely you probably want to lay it that way around uh, but as we you know we've seen it will be okay to power the gun but you're not going to get a full day's play out of it at all uh, i've got 1200 new pro that's far too long that won't fit in there i've got an 11.1 that won't go in there either uh, I've got a 7.4 Giant. Now, these are more in line with the size of the old school, um, what we call sort of mini type batteries or nib type. So this is classed as a mini type battery in the old Tokyo Marui literature. So that is a 7.4 1600 milliamp and that will happily sit in there and sit within the, the sort of confines of that battery box without any issue. So that's, I'm gonna stop throwing it. So that's a Giant Power 1600 milliamp 7.4 and then we've got a 1200 eight fields lipo stick which very easily sits in there with no issues whatsoever uh, and then last but not least we've got the 8.4 volt that i used to chrono it uh, as part of the chronoing i did use the included 8.4 and this 8.4 and they gave the only difference was like 0.1 or 0.2 of a round per second in terms of rounds per second. You know, there's no difference really, discernible difference that you would notice. Uh, and that will sit quite happily in there. So if that one fits, I would guess that the 9.6 will also fit in there. Again, get it either side like that. <coughs> Run your wiring down and that should sit quite nicely in there. And that's a 1600 milliamp uh there we go vp racing nim type battery and the other one is just an 8.4 same type of battery 8.4 1600 and that's just uh, a vp racing one as well so for 60 pound um 105 pounds in the uk roughly i've seen them for about up to 115 pound on other retailers as well uh in two-tone um you're actually getting quite a lot for your money it is going to need a good barrel clean might be worth asking the retailer if you're going to buy it in the uk particularly if they would clean it for you if not it's a it's a two minute job and it's a case of get some kitchen roll and thin strip of kitchen roll just sort of like about a centimeter wide but quite long about 13 14 centimeters and you just stick a little bit like thread in a needle stick the first bit through and you wrap it round almost like a coiling it round but coming down as well uh, so it gets quite thick and then you're just going to push it down the barrel and you push it all the way down until you can see it in the hop unit there, which is a white plastic one on this one, uh, and then pull it back out again. Um, if it's not going in with a bit of force, 
then basically if there's no faucet at all you can just easily push it in you've not got enough kitchen roll uh, on there or toilet roll or whatever you choose to use if you can't get it in at all then you've got too much on and you're gonna have to reapply it and basically just take that off put some clean on and you repeat the process until it all comes out clean basically and there's no more dirt on there then your barrel is considered clean so i hope that's been helpful to you i hope you've enjoyed that i do quite like it I'm not convinced it's quite as good, uh, particularly until I see the internals, as the uh, SEMA ones. But then SEMA are just absolutely blowing away the competition at the minute. They have continued to innovate and push boundaries and things like that. JG have kind of just stuck at what they're doing. Uh, they don't make terrible guns. I've, I've not personally had... <clears throat> I've seen quite a few people online saying that they've had... JGs are bad and things like that. I have not personally had a bad JG. I think they've all been just solid solid and steady but nothing spectacular nothing amazing but then when you're paying 60 pounds 100 pounds you know often we're not expecting a, a, a lot definitely a lot of gun for your money um <clears throat> but I, I do feel a little bit like some of the SEMA stuff is probably better than what this is so i will leave the usual photos for you after this um and i will do a disassembly video as well which should go uh, live the week after this one so thanks a lot thanks for watching please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh, make sure to join uh, visit my other socials and my discord on the link i've put down below in the description as well see you next time guys bye